everyone, this is Miss Barb from the Sterling Heights Library coming to you from home because the library is still closed. Hopefully we will be open in a few more weeks. Uh, we're, we're just not sure, <laughs> we're all in the same boat. Uh, no one quite knows when we're going to be reopening, but uh, make sure that you keep checking on the website. It will have all of the most up-to-date information. Uh, because you cannot come to the library for story time, I'm bringing story time to you by doing this video story time. And the story that I wanted to bring to you today is one of my favorites called One Windy Wednesday. Kind of a fun story to do and uh, perfect because this is going to be a Wednesday story time. In addition to the story, I have a couple of crafts that I'm going to show you how to make today. The first craft, because it is a story about wind, we are going to make a wind sock craft. Uh, patriotic looking in honor of Memorial Day coming up next weekend. We've got a wind sock craft, a paper craft. There is also an edible craft that you can make today, which is graham cracker with uh, strawberries and frosting to put it together to make it look like a flag. Uh, when I talk about the craft in more detail, you'll, uh, I'll give you suggestions for alternatives for the food that you use. And the last thing is uh, I'll mention to you later, this is a craft that we made this past week for our Maker Monday, which is a close pin wreath, patriotic wreath for Memorial Day, which was just kind of a fun and easy craft to do. And even though we've got uh, little people that are doing the story times, that are listening to story times, this is actually something that you may be able to do with a small child uh, by putting the clothespins onto the wreath. So uh, I'll have instructions for that if you look on the Maker Monday from this past week. So we are going to start with the story. And the story today is One Windy Wednesday, and this is by Phyllis Root. This is One Windy Wednesday. One Windy Wednesday by Phyllis Root. One Wednesday, Bonnie Bumble felt the wind begin to blow. It blew and it blew and it blew. It blew the quack right out of the duck. It blew the moo right out of the cow. It blew the oink right out of the pig. And it blew the ba right out of the lamb. Moo, said the duck. Oink, said the cow. That's not right. What should the duck say? The duck should say quack. And how about the cow? What does the cow say? The cow doesn't say oink. What does the cow say? Moo. The cow is supposed to say moo. Quack, said the lamb. Bah, said the pig. That's not right either. What's the lamb supposed to say? Is it supposed to say quack? Who makes the quack noise? The duck is supposed to make the quack. What's the lamb supposed to say? Ba, the lamb should say ba. And how about the pig? What noise is the pig supposed to make? Oink, that's the, that's the noise the pig should make is an oink. What a mess, said Bonnie Bumble. All of the animals are making the wrong noises. When the wind died down, she worked to put everything right. She patted, what sound goes with the duck? She patted the quack onto the duck. That's the right sound for a duck. And what sound goes with the cow? Moo is the noise that the cow should make. So she hitched the moo back onto the cow, tied it onto the cow's horn. 
she tied, what noise goes onto the pig? Oink. The pig makes an oink noise. So she tied that onto the pig. And how about the last one, the lamb? What noise does the lamb go with? Ba. That's the noise that a lamb makes. So she knit the ba back onto the lamb. Quack, said the duck. Moo, said the cow. Oink, said the pig. Ba, said the lamb. That's better, said Bonnie Bumble, all worn out. Just then, a little breeze blew by. Meow, meow, meow. <gasps> Who's supposed to make the meow noise? The cat's supposed to say the meow, but who's the noise coming from? <gasps> it's coming from the dog. Oh no. And Bonnie Bumble had to put the rest of the noises back together. That is the story, One Windy Wednesday. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope everyone enjoyed the story, One Windy Wednesday. It is one of my favorite stories. And in honor of the story, because I thought with a story that had to do with the wind, that we would do a craft that has to do with the wind, I thought that we would make a windsock craft today. And the windsock uh, theme that I chose for the craft, because we are coming up to Memorial Day weekend, I thought that we would make a patriotic windsock. And I will show you how to do that. So there are several things you will need to make this craft. You will need a couple of pieces of blue paper. If you don't have blue paper at home, I happen to uh, have purchased some while I was out this week. Uh, kind of a dark blue color, but if you use a different shade of blue, that should be perfectly fine. Uh, and if you don't have blue paper at home, you could take a piece of white paper, you could use a blue crayon and you could crayon it to make it blue. You could uh, use markers on it, you could use paint on it, whatever way you would like to do it. But I think the craft looks best with blue. If you don't have blue paper and if you don't have anything else that you can use to turn it blue, you can make it with white paper. You can do it any way that you wanted. This is just my suggestion for a patriotic craft. So I've got a sheet of blue paper. It was eight and a half by 11. And I just cut it in half lengthwise. So I have got two sheets, roughly the same size. I didn't really, I wasn't too fussy about uh, making them exactly even. So I'm going to take one of my sheets of paper. I'll set the second one aside. I can use it for another windsock later. So I've got a blue sheet of paper here. And I also was able to pick up some red and white crepe streamers uh, from one of the dollar stores. If you aren't able to get streamers, uh, you could perhaps make your craft with, I hate to say toilet paper because it's a valuable commodity, but uh, if you have some other lightweight paper, maybe some tissue paper uh, from giving gifts, or maybe if you received a gift, uh, you could find some white tissue paper and uh, red, maybe if you have something from Christmas time, you could use that. If you can't find it, that's okay. You can still make the wind catcher, or excuse me, the wind, um, wind sock craft. You don't have to have the colorful paper. But I did decide to make mine patriotic, so I got some red and white colors. And I found that the easiest way for me to cut multiple pieces of crepe paper is I put my crepe paper into a shoe box and have the rolls both going the same way. And that way, when I grab the ends of my rolls, kind of match them up like this, when I pull them, uh, they don't tangle, they don't really roll over or anything. It just makes it a lot easier to cut them. Uh, I just kind of eyeballed how long I'd want them to be. I held them up to my piece of paper and I clip them off maybe about here. So uh, maybe about maybe about 16 to 17 inches a couple of inches past the length of the blue sheet. So I already have some cut. 
and I cut six streamers. I think that's all I'll need for this craft. And it's a really simple craft to put together. I'm going to take my blue sheet of paper and a glue stick, and I'm going to put glue along the top or bottom edge, the long edge of my sheet of paper. So I'm going to put on some glue. I should have grabbed purple glue so you could see exactly where I glued. I don't have any. But uh, my glue is all along this edge. And now I'm going to put on the red and white streamers and I'm going to alternate every other one to be red or white. And I'm just taking the very end of them. So this one, I'll start with white. Then do the red. And it's okay if they overlap a little bit. They won't fit perfectly. just on that very edge. So on that edge, I've got uh, the red and white streamers, and as I said, I alternated them. Looks kind of sloppy from this side. Looks much better from this side. Now I'm going to put a little bit of glue along the side right here, and then I'm going to roll it around so that it makes a tube shape. If you don't have glue, if, you, uh, if your glue doesn't hold, you could also use a piece of tape, you could use a stapler, you could use whatever thing that you want to fasten them. And my crepe streamers will overlap a little bit, but that's, that's okay, we're not gonna be fussy on that. And here's my windsock craft. If I thought that the streamers were too long, I can go ahead and cut those down to a better size. It's completely up to you. I thought to make mine a little bit more fancy, I happen to have, oops, I guess I need to use a stapler. Because my glue is not holding or I simply didn't hold it long enough for my glue to dry. Let me go ahead and staple it together to make it simple. So I've got my stapler and I'll do staple and staple. Now it is not going to come apart. So there's the windsock and I happen to have at my house I've got some uh, glitter star shapes, uh, self-adhesive shapes like this. If you don't have glitter stars, if you wanted to decorate it, you could uh, cut out some star shapes. And if you have glitter glue at home, you could put glitter glue onto a star shape and that way it will have the same effect. It's completely up to you. You could also use foil stars. Uh, if you have aluminum foil, you could try and cut stars out of that to make them shiny silver stars. I happen to have these at home, so I thought this would be the easiest thing for me to do. So I'm going to put a couple of stars onto my windsock, and I'm putting white stars on them because I think that shows up the best against the blue. And also, if you look at the US flag, the US flag has got white stars on the blue background, but it is completely up to you however you would like to do it. So I've got a couple of stars on my patriotic windsock. The last thing that I need to do, uh, I can continue around the edges if I want to uh, continue decorating, but I would like to show you to hang the windsock up, Ooh, my finger, to hang the windsock up, if you have a paper, uh, a hole punch at home, you can use that to punch holes on the sides, or you can very carefully use a pen or a pencil, something a little bit sharp, and poke a hole into the sides of the windsock. So be very careful and poke a hole through. So a hole on one side, kind of guess where the hole should go on the other side. Being very careful so that I do not punch through and uh, get my finger with the pencil. 
hole punch would be better, but this works for now. So I've got a hole on either side. And for a hanger, I could use, um, I've got a chenille stem, I could use that as a hanger. Uh, I've got uh, red yarn, I could use that as a hanger. I think the red yarn is going to look the nicest. So I've got a piece of red yarn. I'm going to feed that through a hole on one side. and feed it through the hole on the other side. So I've got my red yarn fed through and I'm going to simply tie a knot at the top. Clip off the excess, and there I've got a beautiful patriotic windsock all ready for Memorial Day coming up next weekend. So this is one of the crafts I'd like to show you today. I also wanted to show you a fun edible craft that you could do for Memorial Day. And again, going with the theme of uh, kind of flag colors and flag looking things. For the next one, this is a craft to make a flag out of a graham cracker, uh, some strawberry slices, pre-sliced, I just sliced them earlier. Uh, I used a little bit of blue frosting, and then of course I used some white frosting. So what I will do for this craft, for the edible craft, is I'm going to take a little bit of white frosting and I'm going to spread that all over the graham cracker. Now you don't need to use frosting for this. If you wanted to use something maybe like cream cheese or something else that you have, uh, let's see, marshmallow fluff, uh, anything that you have that is white colored that you could spread onto a graham cracker, that's all you need to do for the beginning of this craft. So I've got most of the graham cracker white. I did reserve a little corner here that I'm going to use and put some blue frosting on. If you don't have blue frosting or if you don't care to make blue frosting, you could also fill this in with white. And for the blue portion of it, uh, you could put some blueberries on it. You could put some blue sprinkles there. Uh, anything that you have that's edible that's blue, uh, you can put onto the white frosting and then that will give the illusion that you have the blue corner of a flag. I happen to have the frosting, so I'm going to use that. And it doesn't have to be perfect, I just want to have the illusion that this is um, looking like an American flag. If I wanted, again, I could put sprinkles on there. Uh, if I wanted to, I could put put sprinkles on there, uh, could put blueberries on there, could put little marshmallows on there. You can put anything on there that you want to. Uh, and for the red to do the stripes, I thought that I would put slices of strawberries across and make stripes for the red stripes in the flag. If you don't have strawberries at home, if you have anything else that's red, uh, maybe some pieces of licorice, uh, maybe some other type of berry. If you don't have berries, you could actually use a uh, strawberry jam very carefully and put that on there. It's completely up to you. I'm going to use the strawberries and it, they're going to be a little bit thick for what I need, but that's okay. I just want it to look like stripes. They don't have to actually be perfect stripes. I could also take take my strawberries and cut them. And then I will have a little bit thinner, thinner stripes. So it is completely up to you. So I have a couple of thin slices towards the top.
and I'm not using the inside part because it's a little bit too pink looking for my taste for what I want the flag to look like. But again, it's however you would like to do it. It's an edible craft. It will only be around for a short period of time before someone decides to eat it, which is after all, the goal is to have things that are attractive looking to eat. more slices across the bottom. Obviously a very child-friendly craft. This would be a lot of fun for the kids to make. Hopefully they don't make too much of a mess if they make one, like I am making a bit of a mess. One more little bit. Right there. So this is the American flag edible. Uh, this is something fun that you can make at home. Like I said, if you don't have the blue frosting, you could um, put some blueberries there, something blue colored that is food that the kids can eat. If you don't want to use frosting or if you don't have frosting at home, you could also use cream cheese. Again, just pop a couple of blueberries there. Uh, could maybe even mash them up and uh, almost dye it blue by using blueberries. It is completely up to you. If you have some sprinkles at home, you can go ahead and put some sprinkles on the flag. Uh, you can put sprinkles on there. You could take a marshmallow and maybe cut a marshmallow up into little pieces. It is completely up to you how you would like to make an edible flag craft. The last thing that I would like to show you uh, this is it for the crafts for today, but I would also like to show you a craft that we made on Monday for this past week. We did our Maker Monday and again did a patriotic theme in honor of Memorial Day. Uh, you may have noticed uh, some clothespins in the corner of the screen. This is a wreath that we made. Uh, this is just all made out of clothespins that were spray painted and it is on a metal frame. Turn it around so you can see the back. So if you would like a simple craft, another simple craft that you could make for Memorial Day, this is something that uh, for the main parts of it, the spray painting of the um, spray painting the uh, clothespins, that's something that a grown-up would need to do. If you had a little one doing it, they could maybe use poster paint or use markers. Um, that's something that it's just, it's a fairly simple craft for the Maker Monday. And I thought that I would share that with you in case you were interested in that one too. The video is online. I hope everyone has a great rest of the week and I hope everyone has a safe and healthy, uh, hopefully everyone a very healthy uh, Memorial Day weekend. I'm not sure yet when the library is going to re be reopening, but just keep checking the website and hopefully we will see you again really soon. I miss all of you very much and hopefully we'll be together soon. Bye-bye.